People, 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 welcome back. We are back with the SMG E46. Yeah! But anyways, I hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing good. Remember to stay positive because we don't have time for the negative energy. We don't have time for it. Miss me with that. But anyways, um, we are actually going to see if we can get this thing, well, prepped, I should say, prepped for it to be running. Um, I bought a whole bunch of parts. Um, we're going to see if we can change the belts out today. Uh, replace the water pump today put the radiator radiator back in I promise you I'm, I'm gonna film that part uh, put the radiator back in we're gonna put the expansion tank for the radiator back in and um, we're gonna drain all the fluids or the oil we're gonna drain because that's been sitting like I said for like how many plus years and then we're gonna put the new oil in um, I didn't I did not get a uh, castrol oil I'm changing it up I want to see what the new oil that I'm going to use is really gonna do I did a lot of research on it to see you know if it's a good fit for the car it is a thinner viscosity than uh, normal like 5w30 but um it's a 5w20 um, so we're just gonna see what what happens with it this car has been sitting like I said for four plus years so there's probably rust on the internal so we're gonna see if we can when we drain the oil out and put the new oil in and we're gonna turn the crank to see if it'll actually budge instead of uh, just hoping that the car will turn on and there's no issues on the internals um, so yeah so like I said I got the I got the water pump I actually bought a new thermostat I wasn't going to but then I was like maybe I should so I did so I got a new thermostat got new belts um, for the AC and for the serpentine belt um, of course, you guys know from the last video, I got some brakes, which I haven't put on yet. That's going to be, when we get the car started, we'll, we'll put the brakes on. Um, the Xenon lights, uh, spark plugs, I did not buy the coil packs yet. I probably will probably next week and put that on. Um, so yeah, so today's, today's goal is to drain the oil, put the AC, or not, the AC belt on, the serpentine belt on, and the water pump in, the radiator in and the uh, expansion tank in, including the coolant for that. So I got BMW coolant, and of course you know you have to uh, mix that with uh, water. Pretty much they say distilled water, but I know people who just pour it in regular water and it's fine, but yeah. So let's get, let's get to it, let's get started. I'm anxious, I'm, wow, I'm anxious, so let's, let's get this thing started. Stay down! So before we take out the water pump, we're gonna wanna, you know, loosen these four bolts right here. And then after that, you don't take it completely out. You want to loosen it, and then you're going to loosen the tensioner so that you can get the belt off. All right, guys, so right here is where your tensioner is going to be. I'm just going to use this pick right here. We're going to take this cap off. That's right here. you got to make sure you're gentle but not too gentle. Oh, just took off the cap. Now outside there, it should be... Now this should be a T55 in order to take that thing out might have a little bit of play well, actually no not T55 I'm sorry T50 maybe this thing don't slip there we go now that's loose I'll take this piece off here first come on there we go that off. That thing almost felt like it was stuck on there. Alright guys, so I am trying my best to give you guys the best views possible. So, I, so you know, you guys can see what I'm doing exactly. Alright, so I'm putting this here. I'm just going to do the same exact thing. Loosening that tensioner all the way up. So it's actually very much easier. This butt is up. And now I can take this belt completely off. Now all the belts are gone. And I'm just gonna take a moment. I'm not gonna really film it. I don't think it's needed. I'm just gonna use some Scotch Brite. Just kind of try to clean this area up real quick. And then uh, we're gonna put these things back on. The pulleys look fine, honestly. So I, I don't. I don't think I need to replace them. Um, so yeah, the pulleys look perfectly fine. They sound good. Alright guys, so I was not expecting it to be super shiny looking brand new, but I just wanted to get a good amount of the surface rust off. 
um, especially the you know the parts that were making the belt feel more sticky and you know uh, adherent to the uh, the pulley systems and the crank um, we're not going to turn the crank now yet I'm actually going to put the I'm going to put the uh, drain plug back into the oil pan and I'm going to actually pour the oil back in and then after I do that I'm going to actually see if I can turn the crank and see if I can you know get it to budge a bit and if I can do that I know that everything inside there is not seized up um, that's really my one of the greatest concerns because uh, there were some holes or some pipings that were open and they were not um, sealed all right guys so royal purple is the oil that I decided to go with um, I've heard nothing but good news about them I have not heard anything uh, bad about them. I guess the additives that were added into this oil is actually very good Especially for older engines and pretty much high-performance engines. Of course, this is not a high-performance engines But this car has been sitting and apparently the cleaning power of this um, Oil is actually very very good um, So I'm just gonna pour this in um, And I do want to get this engine tested in terms of the oil uh, so I might have to send it out uh, somewhere just to, I think they have a spot in, I think, Texas or California. So I might actually have to send it out. Um, if you know anywhere I can get uh, the oil tested, um, let me know. Put it in the description or the, yeah, just put it, just comment it somewhere down there. Uh, and just let me know um, if you have any uh, insight more on these oil, on this oil brand. Just let me know. Um, like I said, I don't know everything. Um, so if you have insight on something that's factual, just let me know, write it down in the comments and tell everybody else that, you know, uh, if this is a good brand or not. So I'm just going to use it. The research that I did on it uh, was pretty good. Again, these guys are not sponsoring me. I'm not sponsored by anybody. It would be nice though. It would be nice. It's freaking expensive. But anyways, not, yeah, I mean, they're not bad, but, uh, the hobby is expensive as everybody knows. But um, I'm just going to put this one in um, and then I'm going to turn the crank uh, just to make sure that um, nothing is seized and just to make sure everything is uh, lubricated as this, you know, just goes down, goes down and just, you know, the pistons going up, you know, just everything. Yeah. All right, guys, now for the moment of truth to make sure this thing actually turns. Okay, here we go. Let's turn the crank. So this thing turns. Now this... The socket I'm using is a 7 8 um, and I'm using a breaker bar as well. All right, here we go. All right, things turning. So that's a good sign. It doesn't seem like nothing seized, so that's good. Yep, I'm not seeing any issues. I'm not feeling any crazy resistance either. That's nice. In my opinion, I think this engine is quite solid. All right, so the pulley is refusing to come off, so I'm just using some Aero Coro, uh, just to you know, just to break it loose. Uh, that thing's been on there for a while, and I think there is trying to adhere to that. So I'm just gonna see if that actually, uh, if it eats it up and you take it off. All right, guys. So as you can see, the pulley is off. And one of the things that you have to do when you take the pulleys off is to inspect it to make sure that it is not cracked at any moment. How did I take it off? Well, I, I sprayed it with technically PB Blaster. Um, and <laughs> I don't have a uh, pulley uh, distractor or whatever it's called, or extractor I should say. So what I did was um, I used this, which is a broken hammer pretty much essentially this part of the hammer is pretty much off so I put it here where I should it. Oop. so I put it pretty much pried it against here and hammered hammered at the top right here and it just popped off all right guys so now to take the water pump itself off you're going to have this is it right here so you're gonna have one two three four uh, bolts right here. Well, actually, these are these are nuts. Actually, you're gonna take those off, and it should slide right out. You're gonna want to finagle it to get out. It might be a little bit stuck, um, but you also want to take or make sure you have something to catch all the fluids or the coolant that's gonna drop out, uh, because again, this is coming from straight from the block, so you're gonna have coolant going right out or coming out of it. So 
you're going to use a 10 millimeter and you're going to take this thing off. So I'm going to take off the sensor right here. I don't know there you go. The sensor is off. Alright, so these bolts are a 10 millimeter as well, so you're just going to take that off too. And there is one, two, three for the thermostat, and then there's this huge bolt right here, which is pretty much this bad boy is pretty much the anchor for the engine to be held up. So I'm just going to break loose all of these here. All right, so with this now loosened, you should be able to just take this thing right up. Dude, this thing is clean. All right, so now that it's out, it should be much easier to take the water pump out now. So I'm gonna get, put this to the side. There. Almost there we go. Oh, that's out. Cool. Hey guys, so we finally got the water pump out and the thermostat out and the bad uh belts out. Um so I, for this episode you know, I'm going to call them episode. For this episode, I'm not actually going to put in the radiator and the expansion tank. I'm going to do that next time. What I am going to do is put in the uh, thermostat and the uh, water pump. And I might put on the, uh, the belts as well. I am running on daylight right now, so... Yeah, that's my only driving force right now. If it was if it if it was summertime and it was like running throughout the whole day of like sunlight up to like almost nine o'clock, yeah, I'll be out here. So um, probably tomorrow I'm gonna do the. It's gonna be cold tomorrow, but whatever. Tomorrow I'm gonna put in the radiator and the expansion tank. That is the goal for tomorrow. So guys, you really wanna make sure you clean the surface. Uh, of where the, the housing is for the thermostat and also for the water pump as well um, Just mainly because that sometimes there are some rubber left over from the gasket itself And you want to make sure it's a clean surface and the even surface so that when you put the Water pump and the thermostat back in there's no seating issue because if there is a seating issue It's going to leak and if it leaks That's a headache. So um, just a tip next time if you see any corrosion on the surface uh, surface on it it's just surface corrosion just clean it off with a scotch bright and you should be fine that's exactly what I did and it looks so nice look at it Ooh, nice. Ooh, so, so nice so we're gonna put a new water pump I actually got this pump from um, the country BMW right here in Hartford Connecticut so shout out for them um, again they do not uh, sponsor me but um, I just get OEM parts from them uh, so you are going to want to lube the seal itself now you don't need a whole lot of lube you don't want to like do it too much there's people who try to lubricate things and go overboard it's not it's really not needed you just want a nice uh, lubrication right around the seal so that when you are putting it in um, there's no friction at all and if there are friction it's minimal because technically everything has friction so yeah, you just want a nice lubricant seal right around that ring so that when you do put it back in, it's it seats pretty, pretty good. Alright, now putting this back in, it's literally the same as it came out. It's really not that hard to go back in. Just want to make sure that when you do put it in, you put it in properly. So, this piece here. Yep. And it is idiot proof, so... There's no way of getting it wrong, really. Oh, there it goes. Slides right in. You do kind of have to force it in, in a little bit. Because of that seal. There we go. That's all the way in. Nice. Alright, so we're going to tighten this back on. Oh, these are not torqued a crazy amount. 
All right, and then now for the pulley itself. Remember, since you cleaned it off, it's not gonna be hard to put back on either. Yep, just gonna make sure those bolts align up properly. All right, so you guys don't want to over tighten the, the bolts because they can actually crack the pulley itself if you over tight uh, torque it all right so that's finished and then now we just need to put in the thermostat as well so make sure you have one of your bolts on handy with you oh shoot dropping parts oh shoot where the bolts going oh man hold on can't find them what are you what are you at? right here all right cool so we're gonna put them back in just the same way it came out this is actually very easy, actually. We are running on sunlight. Are you going to go in? Oh, no. Well, this is in the way. It's got to go. You buy, you guys can see where it is. I can't. Oh, shoot. Is it threading? It's not threading. Oh, man, it's not lying. Oh, man. Oh, shoot. Where you at? Right about, right about there should be good. If I can hold it in place. Let's see if I can, oh. Come on. Come on, Miss Jerry Pie. Mix Jerry Pie. Is that threading? Sometimes you gotta wobble it. Don't torque it now, just, just wobble, just wobble. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Dag never can't find third. Oh, 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 there it is. There it is. 13 is 13. Oh, shoot. Hold on. We'll put that on there real quick. Clean that up real quick. Oh, man. All right. Get that nice and tight. Change it to the 10. Oh, man. Oh, man. Get that nice and tight, too. Some long bolts. All right, there we go, there we go. All right, so we're gonna put this back on. We're gonna do it just like this. If this belt wants to cooperate with me, cool. All right, then we're gonna place this right under here. Cool. Guys, ow! Dag nabbit! Jeez! Ah! Oh. So we did a lot of work onto this car. Um, so again, oil. I really want to know what goes on with that oil. If it's really gonna help uh, by just taking out the water pump and the thermostat itself. Looks like the internals are pretty much good. They were lubricated this whole time, so I don't really think it's rust. Turning that crankshaft uh, was really helpful, and it seems like there was like nothing in there. It turned with, with pretty much ease. Um, yeah, like this is really not a hard job. Um, it's pretty cold outside. So if you see me, I don't got the corona. It's just cold outside. So the hype on this car to really get it running is that my car needs some work. So an update on that, I just hit 216,000 miles. I'm about 400 miles away to hit 217,000 miles, which is a huge milestone for the N54 motor. Um, the camshaft actuator or the vinyls actuator, whatever you want to call it, needs to be changed. And it actually could be the camshaft um, the camshaft ledge bearing it could be the camshaft ledge bearing um, that needs to be changed so we're going to get this car running in order so I can get into that car and just dig deep into that engine um, and also um, the reason why this car isn't running is most likely because of the fact that the SMG has some sort of issue with it and I think it's the um, SMG pump that just needs to be replaced 
we'll see what happens whenever I get a battery and I get all of this stuff uh, buttoned up and pretty much put back together so yeah so stick along with the journey like subscribe comment let me know how you feeling yeah stay awesome you awesome all right I'm out I'm talking too much peace